Viral Nader presents, he had at least 15 pregnant girlfriends before he died at 49. If we were to summarize Jackie Wilson's life in one word, it would be whirlwind. Drinking and gambling at a young age resulted in more risky behavior as he grew older. Aside from his dubious life choices, Jackie excelled in a variety of areas and thankfully chose to share his gifts with the world. Keep watching for fascinating insights about Jackie's eventful yet brief life. Jackie had wandering eyes. In 1961, Jackie Wilson turned 27. Despite his youthful age, he'd been married for 10 years and fathered four children. Jackie had a lot of responsibilities, yet he stood up and supported his family. His musical success attracted the attention of other ladies, which he readily accepted. Jackie had wandering eyes and his body often followed. Unfortunately, it wasn't a one-time incident and he became regarded as a serial cheater. While his family resided in Detroit, Jackie relished the independence that his New York apartment offered. On the evening of February 15, 1961, Jackie had planned a romantic evening with model Harlan Harris. He was unaware that a dangerous admirer was waiting outside his flat, loaded. Wilson had a ticket to a short life. Nothing about the 1960s had gone well for Jackie, so he had great expectations for the next decade. Sadly, the 1970s only brought him more misfortune. When his 16-year-old son was visiting a friend in Detroit, he was shot. Unlike his father, Jackie Jr. didn't make it to the hospital in time and died. Jackie had no idea how to cope with his son's death and turned to drugs and booze for consolation. His despair was worsening until he was stricken with a double-dose tragedy. One of Jackie's daughters died from a heart attack, while another got caught in the crossfire of a shady drug operation. Just when Jackie was ready to give up, he saw a light at the end of the tunnel. For days, weeks, and months, Jackie's loved ones could only pray that he would recover consciousness. In 1976, it seemed like their wait was over and Jackie was returning to them. After observing minor replies, his friends and family were certain that he would be fully recovered. It would be a long journey, but it would be worth it. His recovery was short-lived. Jackie's comments may have been brief, but they offered his loved ones a lot of optimism. Unfortunately, his recuperation was put on hold when he relapsed into a semi-comatose condition. Jackie had been in the hospital for many months and the expenses were stacking up. The trouble was that he was once again about to become bankrupt. The singer had fallen into a coma before receiving his $1 million from Nat. Following his accident, the court case was placed on hold and would not proceed until the celebrity recovered consciousness. Doctors had no idea when that would happen, and the hospital couldn't continue treating him for free. That was when his supporters stepped forward. The Hidden Side of Elvis Presley The King of Rock and Roll had a fascinating personal story that only adds to his status as one of the greatest artists in history. He is unquestionably one of the most significant figures of the 20th century. Having worked to reduce cultural taboos that continue to divide people today, there are several tales and anecdotes regarding his job, but the lesser-known details about his personal life are worth telling. A star was born. Elvis Presley, the legendary singer, was born in Tupelo, Mississippi in 1935 to Vernon Elvis Presley and Gladys Love Presley. Despite being born into a poor household, Elvis was connected to two well-known American politicians, Abraham Lincoln and Jimmy Carter. Elvis had a close connection with both of his parents, but he had a particularly strong attachment to his mother, Gladys. Perhaps this was because Elvis had an identical twin brother who was regrettably stillborn. Elvis was a blondie. Elvis Presley was a natural blonde, not the glossy brunette that his image would become associated with. Most likely, he began dyeing his hair in his teens to contrast with his surroundings and project a more dangerous image. According to tradition, a local DJ played Elvis's song That's All Right 14 times in a day. Memphis listeners adored it and couldn't believe Elvis was white. Elvis's only black feature was his hair, which he achieved using shoe polish. His Rise to Stardom Presley's big break came in 1956 when he signed with RCA and released his first album. He was formally dubbed The King with the publication of Elvis Presley 
which was considered the first rock and roll album to reach number one, setting the door for a new age of music. It remained there for an unprecedented 10 weeks in 1956. It's well known that Presley didn't write the majority of his songs, but he made sure to include his signature rock and roll beat into each one. When the Army Came Knocking Even though Elvis Presley had achieved stardom, he still had to serve his nation. He was conscripted into the United States Army in 1958 and served until 1960, when he returned to the United States. Elvis was a member of the 3rd Armored Division, stationed at Friedberg, Germany. Despite being immensely renowned at the time of his service, Elvis never sought to be anything other than a regular soldier and never requested special treatment from his fellow troops. His army salary was given to charity. Being apart from his mother Elvis had a particular affinity with his mother, and even as he grew older, she remained his greatest friend. Even though Elvis was an adult, the two were known to communicate in baby language. While in Germany, he got the devastating news that she had hepatitis, and he was allowed time off to see her. Elvis returned to the United States to see his mother, who died just a few days after his visit. She was just 46 years old when she died of a heart attack, and Elvis was allegedly saddened beyond words. Taking his mind off the tragedy Elvis met the person who eventually healed his grief following the death of his mother when he was in Germany. He'd thrown a party at his Bad Nauheim home when he met 14-year-old Priscilla Ballou. Despite being associated with a gorgeous 19-year-old German girl named Elizabeth Stefaniak, Elvis was entirely in love with Priscilla, and eight years later she flew to the United States and married the king of rock and roll at the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas. The couple had a daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, a year later. The Unavoidable Divorce just a few years after their wedding, Elvis and Priscilla realized it was time to call it quits. Despite having a child together, they recognized their family would never be happy together. Therefore, their divorce was formalized in 1973. Priscilla acknowledged that she thought she had lost out on her greatest years by marrying so young and that she wanted to discover herself. She also admitted that Elvis had little intimate interest in her, especially after the birth of their daughter, which was one of the reasons their marriage failed. Some psychologists attribute Elvis's intimacy issues to his dependent relationship with his mother. Nonetheless, the two remained friends. How did he die? The initial official declaration made to the public was that Elvis died of a heart attack, which was widely believed for many years. However, in recent years, it's been uncovered that Elvis went to the dentist the night before his death and was given codeine to ease his toothache. After his death, it was determined that he had 10 times the typical amount of codeine in his system. Dr. Nicopolis, the king's doctor, stated he was unaware that Elvis had ever used codeine. The Intimate Side of Elvis's Life Elvis also had a friendship with famed singer Petula Clark, something you may not be aware of. According to Petula, he wanted them to be something greater. Clark said that Elvis had previously requested her and Karen Carpenter to join in some intimate group activities. They were contacted by the king while on a ladies' night out and eventually refused his offer. Even though nothing transpired between them, Clark said that, although they sometimes flirted, she never had an affair with Elvis. Having the King for a Father Lisa Marie Presley was raised in the lap of luxury since her father was one of the most renowned persons in history. Her parents were split, so she had to spend time with each of them individually. But Elvis and Priscilla remained friends long after their divorce. Lisa Marie chose to follow in her father's footsteps since she had three studio albums under her credit. Even though she hadn't released an album since 2012, it was encouraging to see a younger Presley was still having an impact on the music business. Being Elvis's granddaughter. Riley Coe, a prominent Hollywood actress, is arguably best known for her roles in Magic Mike and Mad Max Fury Road. But did you realize she's Elvis's granddaughter? Riley is Lisa Marie Presley's daughter, and she's surely as gifted as her papa. She most likely acquired her abilities and blue eyes from the king himself. Elvis also has a grandson. Lisa Marie has two children. Riley Coe, who's an actor, and Benjamin Coe. 
Even though Benjamin doesn't seem to have acquired any aptitude from his renowned grandpa, there is a clear familial resemblance. When you compare their photos, you'll notice an eerie likeness. However, it seems that we'll never know whether Benjamin had the potential to become the celebrity that other members of his family have shown. On July 12, 2020, he tragically committed suicide by self-inflicted gunshot at the age of 27. Spokeswoman for his mother, Lisa Marie, remarked, she is completely heartbroken, inconsolable, and beyond devastated. She adored that boy. He was the love of her life. His turn to be a role model. After finishing school and boxing, Jackie needed to find out what he wanted to do next. Little did he realize that the decision would be made for him. When he was just 17, Frida told him some amazing and life-changing news. She was pregnant. They were expecting their first kid, but there were some concerns. Aside from Frida's father insisting that the two adolescents marry, Jackie wasn't the most devoted companion. Throughout his connection with Frida, Jackie was also deeply acquainted with other ladies. He's said to have made pregnant about 15 of them. Nonetheless, Jackie resolved to take the initiative and strive to be the role model he never had growing up. He married, settled down, and found a job at a factory. The Rivalry Between Elvis and the Beatles Because Elvis was such a big deal in the music business, it's safe to argue that he influenced most rock bands that started in the 1960s. This even includes the Beatles. During the early stages of their careers, the Beatles were huge Elvis admirers and wanted to meet him. Elvis had a different point of view. When the Beatles were at the top of the charts in the 1960s, Elvis made a lot of headlines for denouncing the band. He said that their wild behavior reflected un-American ideals and was a detrimental influence on America's children. Elvis's relationship with his co-star, Anne Margaret Even after the 1964 film Viva Las Vegas had ended, cameras continued to follow Elvis and his starring woman, Anne Margaret. During the shooting, the two actors were quite close and had continuing, even strange, chemistry. When Priscilla Presley published an autobiographical book, she recounted how she had always dreaded Anne Margaret's connection with Elvis, despite both claiming there was nothing between them. However, when Elvis died, Anne Margaret traveled to Memphis with her husband to attend his burial. Elvis and Natalie Wood almost had a serious relationship. When Elvis was at the height of his popularity in the 1950s, he briefly dated actress Natalie Wood. Even though many people assume the relationship was a PR gimmick, Natalie's sister, Lana, authored a book called Natalie, a memoir, which revealed a different narrative. Lana claimed that her sister and Elvis had a real connection, which ended when Elvis sought to introduce Natalie to his family. Natalie allegedly labeled Elvis's mother, Gladys, as a jealous woman, and the two stars romance ended there. Even the king had a man cave. Elvis had one room in his estate, Graceland, that he treasured and spent most of his leisure time in. Until recently, only a few people outside his family had ever seen this chamber, which has been preserved and appears exactly as it did in the 1970s. However, one star has gone inside the secret room, Nicolas Cage. Cage married Lisa Marie Presley, who supposedly showed him Elvis's legendary man cave. Elvis was a black belt karate master. Elvis enjoyed karate as a young guy. Because of this, he stayed in shape and never gave up on his aim of becoming a black belt. He began his training in Germany while serving in the army, where he intensely studied the combat technique Chito Ryu under the severe guidance of Hank Slomansky. When Elvis returned to the United States, he established his dojo in Memphis, the well-known Tennessee Karate Institute, which still operates today. The King almost never performed a show outside the U.S. By the time Elvis made it into show business, he was a global phenomenon. Everyone wanted a piece of the King. Heartbreak Hotel and That's All Right were huge successes, and people all over the globe were singing his songs. Yet Elvis never performed outside of the United States, much to the dismay of his international admirers. Although Presley performed in Canada in 1957, he never did a single performance outside of North America. Nobody knows why. According to rumors, Elvis's manager, the Colonel, was not fond of frequent travel, which contributed to Elvis's grounding in the United States. The Colonel himself. When Elvis was conscripted at the height of his stardom, 
Priscilla was terrified that it would jeopardize his musical career. She urged him to join the special service, where he could have performance privileges and play music for the army, get press feedback, and most importantly, enjoy increased safety in comparison to the army itself. But his management disagreed. The colonel was a real showbiz clairvoyant, accurately predicting that Elvis's service in the army would enhance his image as an American hero and increase his popularity with the public. Elvis made an excellent choice for his management. Colonel Tom Parker was one of the most successful managers in the history of American entertainment. But Tom Parker was not his given name. Parker, a Dutch immigrant called Andreas van Kujik, kept his true identity concealed from the public. He was never naturalized as a U.S. citizen, which may explain why he never wanted to go outside of the nation with Elvis. He may have had difficulty re-entering. Elvis was involved in more than 30 movies. Elvis's nickname, Pelvis, was immediately replaced by King in 1956 when he demonstrated his musical abilities. Women screamed, men swooned over him, and everyone wanted a piece of the king. He also showed skill in another area of entertainment. Elvis appeared or featured in more than 30 films in his career. His on-screen debut in 1956, Love Me Tender, revealed a new side to the star, and he appeared in 27 films during the 1960s. The King's Secret Phobia Elvis Presley valued cleanliness and sought excellence in terms of hygiene and appearance. He was arguably the most germophobic person in rock and roll history. The bad boy guitar-playing hero was terrified of germs and grime, according to Priscilla, in a Daily Mail interview in 2015. He disliked eating or slouching when he visited his pals, always carrying his utensils and cutlery, and drinking only from where his cup's handle was. Elvis never saw Priscilla without makeup. Elvis believed in the mystique of feminine beauty and had never seen Priscilla without makeup. For Priscilla, however, this was typical. She once stated, men don't want to see what a woman has to go through to get where she is. They want to see the product, the result. In another peculiar divide, he never wanted to see me getting dressed. He wanted to see the result of getting dressed, Priscilla said. Rather than upsetting her, Priscilla realized Elvis merely intended to stress the delicacy of the secret. The King was generous. In contrast to his extravagant lifestyle, the King of Rock and Roll was a charitable guy. He always saw the Colonel as a father figure who had helped him launch his career into the stratosphere of stardom. Elvis made sure he was compensated in kind by giving him half of his profits during his musical career. Aside from the Colonel, Elvis was renowned for giving out numerous presents and assisting friends and relatives in need, as well as strangers. He was giving, and he demonstrated his generosity brilliantly, frequently by pranks and theatrical gestures. Elvis battled to stay young. Presley's latter years were marked by personal struggles with narcotics and weight gain, during which his last efforts to remain young failed. Many feel that this was his undoing. Presley was persuaded that he could preserve his career by remaining youthful at any cost. It was certainly not simple. According to Linda Thompson, Elvis had a facelift when he turned 40. He also apparently elected to undergo a two-week sedated phase, a risky form of weight loss that included the use of several medications and injections. It was a hazardous period for the rock star in his current location. He was bedridden, leaving his bed only to wash or use the laboratory, and he ate very little. The Book That Killed Presley Before Elvis Presley died, a book called Elvis, What Happened was composed of three of his former bodyguards. The book revealed numerous details and secret truths about his personal life. It was a shock technique, yet it was still considered a reputable source. When Elvis learned about it, he quickly sought to prevent the publishers from publishing the book, which indicated how far he had fallen. He tried all he could to keep his reputation and dignity intact, but it was in vain. The book revealed his many health difficulties, including an enlarged colon, high blood pressure, liver damage, glaucoma, and other diseases that he attempted to conceal from the public eye. If you've watched the video till here, that means you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe! Don't forget to turn on the notifications bell icon 